Weekly commitment of traders reports are great. They can provide really valuable forward-looking information that can help you trade more profitably. In this video, I'll be talking about what the weekly commitment of traders report is, why it matters, and how it can make you a better trader. Hi everyone, this is Dave Whitcomb from Peak Trading Research in Geneva, Switzerland. We are a leading provider of quantitative commodity research. My goal is to help you trade better with real commodity market insights and systematic trading strategies. Today's video is the first in a series of three videos. Today we're gonna to be talking about COT 101. What is the report? Why does it matter? In the second video, we'll be talking about commodity market participants, how we can see those participant positions in the COT reports, especially hedge funds. Hedge funds matter a lot for commodity markets. And in the third video, we'll be talking about building real systematic trading systems using COT data. Now, when are these COT reports published? They're published every Friday. Uh, with the exception of holidays, and once in a while there's a U.S. government shutdown, the reports are delayed by a few weeks. But usually they're reported every Friday. Now there's a twist, and that is this data published on Friday is as of the previous Tuesday. So the data is always delayed by at least three days. Now by the time you get into the next week, that data becomes four and five and six and seven days delayed. So COT data is not published every day. It's not live. It's always delayed by at least three days. On the CFTC site, you'll find all the different reports listed by year. You can either use Python to scrape the site, or you can simply download them as Excel files or text files for your analysis. A second option for finding COT data is to access it via a trading platform like Bloomberg or Reuters or TradeStation. So what does a COT report look like? Let's take a look at a report that's downloaded directly from the CFTC's website. So if we were to download the CSV file with the data from August 31st, 2021, this is the most recent COT report, we can see the position, first of all, for Chicago wheat, wheat SRW, soft red winter wheat. Uh, this is the first market listed here. There's also corn, soybeans, bean oil, soybean meal. There's 13 markets in this report, 13 agriculture markets in this report in total. Now, if we expand these columns a little bit, we can see that one of the first investor categories here is the NCOM position. It's the non-commercial position. Now, non-commercial traders are hedge funds. When the CFTC says non-commercial, they mean they are not a commercial trading company like Cargill or ADM or Bungie. They're a hedge fund. They're a speculator in agriculture futures. So the non-commercial long position in wheat is 56,132 contracts. The non-commercial short position in wheat is a little bit larger. It's 73,485 contracts. So the difference here between the long and the short is 17,353 contracts. Now, that number is the non-commercial net position. That's the total hedge fund position in Chicago wheat. So the CFTC is doing us a big favor. They're telling us what the total position is held by hedge funds in Chicago wheat as of last week, as of the most recent Tuesday. Now, if we go to Bloomberg, we can confirm that number. Wheat non-commercial, there we go. And we can see that Bloomberg also says 17,353 contracts. That's the same number we calculated before. We can also see what the history of that is. So over time, uh, in 2021, hedge funds have tended to be short wheat. They were almost 50, 60,000 contracts short. They covered a little bit of their risk over the last few weeks, and then they've gotten short recently. They've re-added to short. So they're net short again, 17,353 contracts. Now these COT reports are especially valuable for agriculture futures versus say energy or metals markets. Now, why is that? It's because most of the volume that's traded in agriculture markets is done via futures. 
And of course, the CFTC sees all that futures trading volume on its exchanges, and it says, okay, we can report that, we can quantify that and wrap our arms around that. For energy and metals, there's a lot of stuff that's done OTC, it's done over the counter. So COT data isn't quite as valuable for energy and metals as it is, say, for agriculture markets. Now, without complicating things too much, there's actually two COT reports that you need to know about. There's the supplemental report that's agriculture specific. It has 13 agriculture markets, sometimes called the old report. And then there's the disaggregated report that has 150 different markets. It has agriculture, energy, metals. That's sometimes called the new report. We'll do a deeper dive into the differences between those two reports and those market participants in our second video talking about commodity market participants. So what have we established so far? It's a weekly report. It's always delayed by at least a few days. It's pretty easy to find. And on a very high level, it shows you positioning details across some important investor categories, hedge funds, commercial traders, index funds, and small private traders. Now you might be saying, okay, that's great. How can I use this report to trade? How can I use the data that's in the COT report to make profitable trading decisions? Now in our third video, we're gonna be talking about building real systematic trading systems using COT data. But in the meantime, at a very high level, how you should think about COT data. Imagine sitting down at a poker table and you can see most of your opponent's cards. It's like the people participating in the game, you know what they hold. You don't know everything that they hold, but you have some very important clues about if they have a good hand or a bad hand. That's kind of how the CFTC COT report works. You know that hedge funds are extended really long or they're extended really short, or maybe index funds are extended really long or they're extended really short and you can see how vulnerable those positions are, right? We're gonna build some trading systems in our third video around that idea. Are hedge funds too long and vulnerable to a long liquidation or are they too short and they're vulnerable to a short squeeze? I hope you found this information valuable. You can stick around for parts two and three where we'll be talking more about specific commodity market participants and also building real systematic trading systems. Peak Trading Research is the only company that provides clients with daily estimates for hedge fund positioning across all energy, metals, and agriculture markets. If you're interested in a trial of our research, you can reach out to us at insight peaktradingresearch.com. If you want more real commodity market insights and real systematic trading systems across all energy, metals, and agriculture markets, you can hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for your time. We'll see you soon.